the insane execution of the female torturer stood off concentration camp. World War II was and still remains a dark spot in history, not only because of what happened during the war, but also because of what happened after it. Nazi Germany was indeed a scum of humanity for so many reasons. They made concentration camps where they kept prisoners and did whatever they wanted with them. The tortures of the Stutthof concentration camp was one of the many atrocities Nazi Germany committed. There was one female torturer that was notorious because of her sheer brutality. Let's look at the execution of Eva Paradis. Stutthof was a Nazi concentration camp created by Nazi Germany near the village of Stutthof, now Stutztol, 34 kilometers or 21 miles east of Danzig in the territory of the German annexed free city of Danzig. During the German invasion of Poland in World War II, the camp was built around existing structures and was first used to confine Polish leaders and intelligentsia. Stutthof was the first Nazi concentration camp established outside German boundaries during World War II. Opened on September 2, 1939. On May 9, 1945, it was also the final camp freed by the Allies. It is believed that between 63,000 and 65,000 people perished due to murder, malnutrition, diseases, terrible labor conditions, cruel and forced evacuations, and a lack of medical assistance at the Stutthof concentration camp and its subcamps. The camp was built as a part of an ethnic cleansing scheme that involved the extermination of Polish elites in Danzig and Western Prussia. Even before the war started, the German the German shell shoots in Pomerania was compiling a list of persons to arrest, and Nazi officials were discreetly looking for suitable locations to put up death camps in their region. Until its later massive development, Stutthof was a civilian detention camp run by the Danzig police chief. In November 1941, it was converted into a labor education camp run by the German security police. Stutthof was finally designated as a regular concentration camp in January of 1942. The camp was staffed by German SS guards and, from 1943, Ukrainian auxiliaries brought in by SS Gruppenfuger Fritz Kotzmann, the area's senior SS and police chief, together with female inmates. The first German female SS officer hearing guards arrived in Stutthof in 1942. The Stutthof camp complex employed a total of 295 female guards. Elisabeth Becker, Erna Bailhart, Ella Bergman, Ella Blanc, Gerda Bork, Herta Bothe, Erna Bochter, Hermann Bocher Bruckner, Steffi Brelowski, Charlotte Graf, Charlotte Greger, Charlotte Klein, Gerda Steinhoff, Eva Paradis, and Jenny Wanda Barkman were among the notable female guard personnel. Eva Paradis oversaw Nazi concentration camps. Paradis came to the Stutthof SK-3 camp in August 1944 to train an officer or overseer. She accomplished her training quickly and became a wardess. She was transferred to Stutthof's Brongford Ost subcamp in October 1944 and then returned to the main Stutthof camp in January 1945. In addition, Paradis was engaged in the selection of detainees for the gas chambers, where thousands of innocent men, women, and children were killed. She was dreaded by many because of her brutal treatment of convicts. During the liberation of the Stutthof in May 1945, Eva Paradis was arrested and charged with crimes against humanity, including torture and death of captives by the Polish government. Witnesses testified to Paradis cruel behavior throughout her trial, and the proof was provided of her role in the selection of victims for the gas chambers. Eva Paradis was found guilty of war crimes and condemned to death by hanging on April 27, 1946. Her execution occurred on July 4, 1946 when she was 26. In the aftermath of World War II, the execution of Eva Paradis was an important event. It was viewed as a symbol of justice and a reminder of the Nazi regime's horrors. Paradis was one of the only female guards sentenced to death for her actions, and her narrative served as a warning to future generations. Yet Paradis' execution was equally contentious. Some contend that she was simply a young woman seduced by Nazi ideology who deserved a lighter punishment. Others thought her execution was justifiable, considering the gravity of her offenses. The Stutthof concentration camp now serves as a reminder of the Holocaust atrocities. It is a pilgrimage site for survivors, their relatives, 
and anyone who wishes to pay their respects to the victims. Eva Paradis' death is still remembered, and her narrative serves as a warning about the perils of radical ideology and the value of standing up to injustice. The narrative of Eva Paradis' is a terrible reminder of the Holocaust's crimes. Her activities as Stutthof concentration camp guard were horrible and inexcusable. While some may claim that she was only a young woman corrupted by Nazi ideology, the gravity of her deeds cannot be underestimated. Her death was a symbol of justice and a warning about the perils of fanaticism. Her narrative is remembered today as a reminder of the significance of standing up to injustice and atrocities perpetrated in the name of hatred. If we talk about the Stutthof prisoners, the initial 150 detainees were chosen from among Poles and Jews detained in Danzig shortly after the commencement of the war on September 2, 1939. In the two weeks that followed, on September 15, 1939, the convict population grew to 6,000. Until 1942, almost the majority of the inmates were Poles. In 1944, the number of convicts climbed significantly, with Jews accounting for a sizable share of the arrivals. In July 1944, the first group of 2,500 Jewish inmates came from Auschwitz. In all, 25,566 Jews were moved from Auschwitz to Stutthof and 25,053 from the camps in the Baltic nations. When the Soviet army launched its march into German-occupied Estonia in July and August 1944, the Kluge concentration camp officials evacuated most of the detainees by water and transported them to Stutthof. According to some reports, the camp officials murdered the majority of the surviving detainees in a mass shooting. Stutthof's recorded detainees included Germans, Czechs, Dutch, Belgians, French, Norwegians, Finns, Danish, Lithuanians, Latvians, Belarusians, Russians, Croats, and others, in addition to Jews and Poles. If we talk about the female guards at Stutthof, around 5,000 of the 50,000 guards who served in the concentration camps were women. The first female guards arrived in Auschwitz and Manzanek from Ravensbrück in 1942. Due to the lack of male guards, the Nazis began conscripting women the next year. The German position titles of Officerherren translated to female overseer or attendant in the context of these camps. Several of the camps are alleged to have had relations between SS men and female guards, and Heinrich Hilmer instructed the SS members to treat the female guards as equals and comrades. The camp commander, Wilhelm Dorr, publicly sought a sexual connection with the top female overseer, Erda Haas Breitmann Schmidt, at the comparatively modest Helmbrecht's subcamp near Hof, Germany. Another part of the female guard culture was corruption. Ilse Cook, dubbed the Witch of Buchenwald, was married to Karl Cook, the camp commandant. Both were accused of stealing millions of Reichsmarks, for which Karl Cook was convicted and killed by the Nazis only weeks before the U.S. Army liberated at Buchenwald. Ilse, on the other hand, was absolved of the allegation. In 1951, she was convicted of war crimes and condemned to life in prison. Clara Kuning, a camp guard in 1944 who served at Ravensbrück and its subcamp at Dresden Universal, was an obvious exception to the cruel female supervisor paradigm. The camp's head wardess complained that she was too nice and friendly to the detainees, leading to her discharge from the camp service in January 1945. Her fate remained unknown since the Allied firebombing of Dresden on February 13, 1945. Women were taken from workplaces in the German labor exchange at the war's end and brought to training centers. Women were also taught on a smaller scale at at Nuzigam, Auschwitz I, Auschwitz II, and III, Flossberg Gross Rosen, Stutthof, and a few other camps, including Mothausen. The majority of these ladies came from the areas surrounding the camps. The first female overseers were stationed in Nungame, Dachau, and Mothausen satellite camps in 1944, with only a handful at Natzweiler Strudhof and none at the Mittelbad Dora complex until March 1945. 28 Aufseherin served in Wood, some at Buchenwald, 60 in Bergen-Belsen, one at Dachau, overseeing the brothel, more than 30 in Mothausen, 30 at Majdanek, 140 at Sauschenhausen and its subcamps, 158 trained at Nungame, 47 trained at Stutthof, compared to 958 who served in Ravensbrück, in the Flossberg complex, and over 800 in the Gross Rosen. Numerous female subcamp supervisors were trained and or employed in Germany, Poland, France, Austria, 
and Czechoslovakia. Thank you for taking the time to watch. If you'd like us to make more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and leave your video suggestions in the comments section.